Hey everybody, welcome to Future Tunes, formerly known as Retro Futurism and Animation. Well, SEO friendly, that was a horrible title for the series, so going forward it will be known as Future Tunes, uh, which is slightly better, <laughs> certainly easier to say. For those new here, this is where we explore the intersection of animation and retrofuturism by profiling and contextualizing past predictions of the future as seen in cartoons. Kicking off this new era is this video concerning Hanna-Barbera and their futuristic predictions. We're going to be looking at a couple of shows that are not the Jetsons. One, because we already covered that in episode one. And two, because there is enough material there for an entire standalone video uh, if we want to expand upon that someday. As a note, we are going with shows that feature a specific year in the future, rather than relying on aesthetics, so no Galaxy Goof-Ups, or Yogi's Space Race, or any other show that simply takes place in a sci-fi setting. We will instead be breaking down the features featured in two animated series produced by the studio. Now I know, Hanna-Barbera can be very divisive. They have often been criticized for their limited animation. Uh, legendary cartoonist Chuck Jones actually once referred to their work as Illustrator Radio, and while I don't exactly share that thought, I do think their strength did come from character design and voice characterization. Uh, voice actors like Doss Butler and Don Messick gave these characters a ton of personality, uh, but that's not to say Hanna-Barbera didn't produce a lot of terrible shows, uh, because they did. We've talked about the origins of the studio before, uh, as well as their output from the 1970s, uh, when they more or less ruled Saturday morning television. There was plenty of trash there, and everything that is going to be covered here came from that decade, starting with C Lab 2020. 2020 was shit. Uh, I'm sure many of you are glad it's over. Uh, not that 2021 is shaping up to be much different, though, you know, let's stay positive. <laughs> Sea Lab 2020 premiered on September 9th, 1972, and ran for 13 episodes through December 2nd. The series followed the adventures of a research team stationed at Sea Lab, an underwater research facility. It was created by Alex Toth, who also gave us 60 superheroes Space Ghost and Birdman, which in turn gave us Space Ghost Coast to Coast and Harvey Birdman, not to mention the parody of this, Sea Lab 2021, as uh, so needless to say, Toth's work informed a huge part of the original Adult Swim. There is something very futuristic, or retrofuturistic, about early ocean exploration. Um, there's a whole world under there, uh, full of creatures and mystery that we've only recently been able to explore. Uh, and so when this series was produced, at the tail end of the space age, it makes sense that the future, uh, or in the future, underwater habitats would exist. Just like one day we'd live on the moon. There's been plenty of retrofuturistic art created depicting underwater cities. Uh, even early deep sea diving equipment fits the aesthetic, and so Sea Lab wasn't that ridiculous of an idea. We are going to be covering episode one, Deep Threat. The first episode, or pilot of a show, generally sets up the world, uh, so this should give us a good idea of how things function in this 2020. <laughs> this 2020 was infinitely better than the one we got. Uh, no global pandemics here. It obviously features uh, the underwater research facility, Sea Lab. The design is in line with a lot of uh, futuristic homes we've seen uh, from around this time, so lots of domes and round edges. Uh, there is also underwater vehicles, similar to cars or vans, and other submarines that helped the crew in their research. Uh, there is care and concern for the environment, you know, things are stable, video calling, and uh, yeah. Uh, we are kind of limited, given that we don't really leave the sea, or see the world outside of Sea Lab. Uh, not that a children's cartoon generally showcases geopolitical situations or anything, um, but yeah, there isn't much more here. Next up, we have everyone's favorite family of the future, The Partridge Family. This is one of the more bizarre shows we've looked at. It transplants 70s TV stars The Partridge Family into a Jetsons-like future, specifically the year 2200, hence the title, The Partridge Family, 2200 AD. This debuted in 1974, running for 16 episodes. It was based off of The Partridge Family, uh, which was a sitcom uh, itself, running 1972-1974. Uh, that featured a family of traveling musicians and starred Shirley Jones, David Cassidy, and Danny Bonaducci, uh, who was my only real friend of reference. Uh, I remember him from a string uh, of reality show trash in the early 2000s, uh, celebrity boxing, stuff like that. Uh, kind of a rough future for uh, Danny there. Bonaducci reprised his role in 2200, also known as the Partridge Family in Space. Uh, this, of course, followed Josie and the Pussycats in placing IP in a futuristic setting. Uh, that was Hannah Rivera's uh, shtick for a while. Now, why uh, Partridge Family 2200 AD exists is a mystery to me. <laughs> the theme song tells us they are showing us how it's going to be. The world design uh, and sound effects are identical, uh, pretty much to the Jetsons. <laughs> the series actually began as a spinoff uh, of the Jetsons, where Judy and Alroy were supposed to be older. So Hannah Barbera were able to save some money and reuse assets. 
Uh, it's blatantly obvious in the opening. A lot of predictions appear here, uh, like tube travel. A couple gets picked up at a bus stop like this. Uh, at an automated food stand, dehydrated food is served. And we see electric tennis <laughs> a few years before Pong. Uh, a robotic dog, Orbit, is also introduced. Uh, I get that the dog can fly, but I still think it's pretty fucked up that it's being dragged behind the car uh, in the intro here. Unlike the Jetsons, some residential buildings are grounded. Basic, uh, nondescript domes. Video doorbell. Uh, the television design is really cool as well. In the episode I watched, an inventor creates a way to quickly uh, teach their hillbilly cousin to sing. It's a very complicated system, sort of proto-autotune machine, uh, turns him into a chicken, I guess, kind of like the fly. This cousin also arrives in outdated technology. This plane, placed around a century old, uh, it arrives at a jet port, so interspace travel is assumed. The music segments come off as early music videos, and some are very trippy, very psychedelic, super into these, probably the most enjoyable part of the show actually. And uh, yeah, might as well end it on a high note. Uh, I enjoy Mainline Hanna-Barbera, but their lesser known output can be a drag sometimes. I uh, wouldn't necessarily recommend these, but I will post links in the description if you want to check them out. If you are looking for more retrofuturistic content, look no further than our Patreon, where we recently covered Fallout 3's viral marketing campaign, Prepare for the Future. $5 a month gets you access to that, as well as Century of Schlock, currently winding down our look at animated smut from the 20th century as well as dozens of other exclusive videos at patreon.com slash pixelportraits. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and check out the other entries in the series. As always, thank you so much for your interest in this channel, and thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.